Hello all and welcome to our virtual presentation on the ScanHead system controller with Polygon ScanHead integration. My name is Rory Foley. I'm joined by my team members Travis Frank and Nick Schmidt. <coughs> First off, I'd like to begin this presentation by a big thank you to our technical directors, uh, Mark Lucas, C. Throne Svam, and Gary Buker. Uh, thank you guys. We never would have made this without you. Uh, again, my name is Rory Foley. Uh, I'm an electrical engineering major. I'm joined by Travis Frank, who is an electrical and computer engineering major, and Nick Schmidt, who is a, also an electrical engineer. Based out of Bedford, Massachusetts, our sponsoring company, Cambridge Technology, are experts on laser systems. They use galvanometers, which are motors to drive mirrors, and create their own controllers and softwares. Recently, they acquired the Polygon ScanHead system, which is what our project was based upon. To give a better overview of where our project motivation comes from, we start at the beginning. Our current product, which is a Galvo-based scan head, has two motors in it that drive separate mirrors to reflect the laser and etch onto the workspace below. It is controlled by the ScanMaster controller, and the user interface is the ScanMaster designer, both of which are Cambridge Technology products. The acquired product is the polygon scan head system right here, which uses a polygon shaped mirror that rotates inside and one galvo meter to etch into a workspace below. Currently, this product is driven by a Faro controller and Faro based software called Winlays. The target product is to have this polygon scan head controlled by Cambridge Technology Scan Master controller and software that Cambridge Technology's customers are comfortable with, Scan Master Designer. A deeper look at the technology shows that Galvo Base uses two motors to drive two separate mirrors, reflect the laser onto the workspace below. This can be incredibly time wasting as it requires a redraw on every line. <laughs> the polygon based system right here, however, rotates around completely and simply selects another facet when the next line is used. Our anticipated best outcome is to completely drive the polygon scan head system with ScanMaster controller. We need efficient, high resolution images to output with small errors so that our customers can use the product. With that laid out, I'm happy to announce that our anticipated outcome was achieved. We can cleanly and reliably output images from the polygon scan head. We can completely control the speed through the scan master controller and control an IO is completely comes out of a single box with a manufactured IO board in the back. For Cambridge Technology, the economic impact is just as important as providing another option for loyal customers. Customers who constantly look for more efficient systems come to Cambridge Technology with requests of a better system. So far, Cambridge Technology has been providing the Polygon scan head with the Faro controller. So with our new technology, we will allow Cambridge Technology to stop directly supporting a competing company. With this technology, Cambridge Technology expects another 500,000 to 800,000 additional system sales. A deeper look at our whole system begins with a PC running Scam Asset Designer. The user inputs their preferences into Scam Asset Designer, which then communicates with the entire Scam Asset Controller. First, the information stops at the SMC server, which is running Linux, and then spits information into the marking engine, which is a base level C program. Both of these interact over FPGA logic and send signals through the I.O. board manufactured by our team into the polygon scan head, controlling both the laser, the Y Galvo, and the polygon system inside. One of the initial steps was to update the Verilog logic inside the board. Originally, Cambridge Technology sent a 32-bit string containing four 8-bit pixels. We updated this to be a 32-bit string of 32 1-bit pixels. This means that our image was completely in black and white, which was fine because the polygon scan head uh, renders images so quickly that it doesn't really matter what color each pixel is. We then updated what data was sent through the logic into the scan script language. Certain registers were used in order to access data about the polygon scan head or the facets inside. So we had to update what was sent through and how it was sent through. Sending and receiving this polygon scan head signals was, was completely important as the polygon scan head outputs information about itself, such as what facet it's on, what speed it's traveling uh, through the IO board into the logic. The logic has to handle these values and send them into the upper level logic. While working on the logic and code, we had to take a step into the physical world and do some math. 
The polygon rotates fast enough to write at 800 lines per second, and with each facet reflecting an entire line's worth of pixels. At 300 dpi, this only left us about 11 microseconds of processing time per pixel. We had to do all this math to show that the, our system would be fast enough to write pixels to the register and output them and keep information completely correct. I'm now going to hand it off to Travis Frank to show you a little bit more in-depth information about the updates to our technology. To incorporate actual polygon scanning capability into the system, we needed to target three major new functions. The first was polygon control. Polygon control meant being able to enable and disable the polygon as well as said speed from Scan Master Controller. Additionally, we needed to be able to read its signaling pins to check for speed synchronization, a requirement to ensure the polygon was at a desired speed and ready to scan. The next major addition was the change from scanning using the Xgalvo to using the polygon. This meant waiting for each facet and adding a delay before executing a raster line scan to accurately position the image as desired. Additionally, the firing rate of the laser needed to be calculated based on the scanning speed of the polygon system. Lastly, correction was done to compensate for errors in the polygon. Deviations were added to the delay and Y Galvo positioning on a per facet basis to perform these corrections. The first function worked on was polygon control. This was a necessity due to its requirement for implementing laser timing and corrections. For initial testing, a script was written in Cambridge Technologies scan script language. Using existing IO reading and writing functions, memory map signal lines can be accessed from the Linux subsystem. This allowed functions such as enabling the polygon, changing its speed, and waiting for speed synchronization within the Scan Master Designer software. Once finished, this allowed us to move on to implementing laser timing. Before laser timing was implemented, the previously mentioned 8 bit per pixel to 1 bit pixel conversion was implemented. Once finished, the laser timing and delay computations were implemented in the Linux subsystem. Both laser timing and delay are computed using parameters such as workspace size, image size, and polygon rotation rate. Firing rate is then sent directly to the FPGA from the Linux subsystem, while the delay is sent to the firmware where it is executed every, after every facet detection. The functionality to scan perpendicular to the polygon scan direction was taken from the previous Galvo-based scanning system. Therefore, with laser timing finished, we were able to have full image scanning capability. The last software task was to implement facet and Galvo correction for increased image fidelity. During manufacturing, errors can occur in each facet of the polygon that can result in perturbations in the laser scan direction. Using a signal called index sent from the polygon which triggers during a specific facet, the facets can be tracked during scanning. This allows corrections to be done on a per facet basis. These corrections called wobble and delay add to the Y Galvo positioning and X pre-scan delay respectively. As seen in the image, if an error caused a scan to shift in the positive X direction, for example, a negative delay could be added to shift it to the left for that specific facet. Lastly, I will talk about how the user is able to configure the polygon to their needs using ScanScript. ScanScript is essentially a custom scripting language developed by Cambridge Technology to provide low-level control of the system and provide easy automation. During development of the previously mentioned functions, 11 ScanScript functions were added as well to enable the user to configure the polygon to their specific needs. These include enabling the polygon and changing the polygon speed, which replaced the bulky testing script you were using previously. Further functions were added to enable the user to configure wobble and delay corrections for each individual facet. With software completed, we need a way to package the new system in a reliable and portable fashion. I will now hand it over to Nick Schmidt, who will talk about the I.O. board development. So next I'll be taking you through a few of the hardware aspects of the Polygon scan head integration. Uh, it was highlighted by the I.O. board part right here. So basically anything, this is the controller. The board gets us from controller to scan head. This is where we ended up last semester. This was our demo for the symposium was this 
um, Galvo based setup with the SMC. So there's a, the actual scan head itself, the SMC, a few power supplies, um, a debugger, and a, the laptop. And this sort of served as our hardware um, starting point for where we moved on from here uh, in the prototype, which I'll show you. Here, uh, this is sort of the first step that we could take to develop new things for the new scan head. So this we needed to be able to control the new scan head and be actually physically hooked up to it to, before we knew if anything actually worked. So as you can see right here, this is the actual scan head. Again, it's got a few power supplies, scan master controller itself, the laptop, the debugger again, and then this, which is our, our setup of breakout boards with some jumper wires across that we could um, connect things that needed to be connected. Um, as you can see right here, it's a little bit of a mess. It did uh, give us a few issues with some shorting some things that didn't need to be shorted together. Um, but that's the nature of um, that complex of a system and trying to prototype with it. So this was the motivation for designing a new IO board for the control box that would ultimately house our whole um, project and be our deliverable to our technical directors. So. There is an I.O. board in the initial box that we received for the old controller, the competitor controller that was being used to control the scan head. And this I.O. board served the purposes of simplifying the cabling, um, allowing the power supplies to be consolidated and be hooked up with one AC connector to the wall. It gave us a master power switch and a few things on board um, to configure the system. So the next step was to uh, design, the, design the board itself, so we, we sat down virtually with our technical directors and sort of defined some of the requirements, picked some of the pins that would be used from the SMC. Um, this is when we talked about what needed to be pulled up and pulled down and um, what things needed to be configurable on the hardware level externally by the user. So this is what we eventually came up with. This is the, the Altium 3D rendering of the board itself. Um, and I'll kind of go through a few of what, of what the connections are. So there are two connections for signals from the SMC going into the board. We have power from the board going out to the SMC. The power comes in here from the three internal regulators in the control box. They are um, AC to DC power supplies of 15, a negative 15, and a 24 volts. We have another power and signal output to the scan head, the power is distributed from these three connectors, so that consolidates our power supply significantly. And then there's also a laser output to control the, the actual external laser that is in the scan head. So what we were finally able to deliver was this functional prototype. So this right here shows what we, um, there'll be an image of it in a few slides. This is what we came up with. This control box houses the SMC, that external card, which still needs to be in there for a little bit. It'll be removed once that can be put into the scan head soon. Um, this allows one connection from the PC to the control box and one connection from power from the wall to this. It just distributes all the power that's needed internally and then outputs scan head control, scan head power, and laser control. So we went from this top left mess over here with all these external wires and power supplies and breakout boards to this nice clean streamlined version here. Which you can see realized in this image right here we have the PC, the control box, and the scan head. In conclusion our ABO was achieved. We were able to integrate a new scan head into the existing SMC system. Uh, we developed a functional deliverable prototype and the next thing that will happen is our technical directors will take what we've done sort of refine it further and get it ready to be a marketable product to customers. Um, there are a few customers currently that are waiting on the system, so it was really definitely satisfying to be able to work on something that's actually going to be going to customers in the near future. As always, we'd like to thank our three amazing technical directors for all their support throughout the semester, as well as Dr. Sunak, Program Director, and our Consulting TD, Mike Smith. Thanks for a great year.